All right, so we got every single Warhammer 40k Space Marine ranked explained. Let's watch the video. Since it is a war game that is filled with many different armies, okay. the wild science fantasy of Warhammer 40k is no exception. But while some Salamanders armies, number like the one. Militarum, have hierarchies and rank systems that could be familiar to us, the warriors of the Adeptus Astartes, or Space Marines, are organized in some very unique ways. So, since many of the most epic stories of this setting involve these superhuman warriors of the Imperium, we thought it would be a good idea to get acquainted with the rank structure of the Space Marines. Oh, okay, The journey cool. to superhuman existence starts as an aspirant. The many organizations of the Adeptus Astartes find these fresh recruits in a variety of ways, but they are always expected to be the very best of what humanity has to offer, as anything less could not hope to even survive the process of becoming a space marine, much less endure the rigors of their lives. So they're like the best so of the, the best. the process begins by finding those uncanny individuals. Most chapters have a homeworld that they recruit from, like the Ultramarines and their world of Macrog. Fleet-based chapters, however, find their aspirants on... I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I firmly believe, like, if I was, like, you know, like, legit in, like, the Warhammer 40k universe and stuff like that, bro, and I was, like, really born in, like, you know, like, Macra, like, just, like, you know, just, like, the, uh, world that we just seen, like, two seconds ago, to be honest with you, bro, I, I feel like I would have, like, really been fit, you know, for the role, um, it is just, and, 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 you know, maybe that's just me and all, but, um, I truly think, you know, I would be fit for it, you know, just saying. Worlds in which they have established outposts and fortress monasteries. The Black Templars are well known for this style of recruitment, stopping at planets they've previously liberated to pick up new recruits as they crusade around the galaxy. Oh, like free These agents. These worlds range in their technological sophistication, but most marine chapters prefer to recruit from primitive worlds where life is harsher, guaranteeing that their pool of recruits is already hardier than most. That makes Even sense. Even chapters who recruit that makes from sense. established imperial worlds try to only recruit from populations that select for survivalist traits such as high makes gangers. sense quite often the reason they do that is because they want like you know like if you go to like a world that's like beat up or whatever and you like see like survivors there or whatever you're most likely pick them up than pick up like somebody that's like living comfortably in like a palace in like another world you get what i'm saying because like they're they're more they've been through it they they've been through battle they've been through hardship so whenever they do go through like you know battle and hardship any actual wars and stuff like that uh they're going to be like way more hardened and they're going to be like more prepared for like prepared for a situation than somebody who's just you know who's had ice cream every single day uh for the last 10 years so in these populations view service to these mysterious sky gods as a mark of pride and festivals are held on the regular intervals that chapters send their recruitment teams there's not a festival for me once a pool of aspirants has oh. been gathered there will typically be some sort of trial a contest of strength endurance and will that further weeds out the weaker hopefuls these tests are usually specific to the chapter culture but they all generally test the hardiness of the aspirants keeping Makes in sense. mind that these humans are typically younger than 15 years old as older recruits tend not to survive the process of becoming a space marine at all wait what dang bro so bro they're trying to get prodigies and they don't need the body doing like these type of surgeries on the whoa hmm maybe maybe i'm not fit for this <laughs> Having won or at least survived their contest, hmm. the most promising aspirants are then taken by the giant marine recruiters back to their chapter to begin the process and never see their families again. As a Yo. new member of the chapter, the children aspirants become neophytes and are immediately put to work. They learn the chapter's histories, routines, and the behavior expected of them in between surgeries, of course. There are quite a few of these before a neophyte is considered fit for combat duty, and each chapter has their own unique way of going about this process. Okay. Most chapters assign their youngest members to the scout squads in order to learn how to use their war gear in a relatively Makes safe sense. environment. Makes sense. Some chapters, like the Space Wolves, decide to put their neophytes into squads of frontline fighters called Blood Claws, arming them like a full battle brother and allowing them to work out their youthful exuberance in the harshest part of a battle. I mean, but that's not fair though because like your youngest people are going to die. Like they're going to like they're going to they're in the front lines literally. They bro, they're going to die. What do we Like am I missing something? Like like am I missing like a piece of the puzzle? Like did I lose a piece? 
they're gonna die. What do what we <laughs> we put the youngest people with the least experience up front? I mean, listen. I guess if you want to save like the pros and stuff like that at the back, then sure. But huh? Like they they put they're gonna put us in the front? That's crazy work. And there are others that are more distinct, <laughs> like the Black Templars who mix they're their putting the YNs their in the front squads, so they might <laughs> learn from the brothers they are assigned to squire for, or the Grey Knights who do not allow their neophytes to take part in combat at all until they have finished the process of becoming fully fledged space marines. Oh wowzers. Regardless of the method, very few neophytes survive the surgeries and their combat duties to make it to become space marines. So what's the The bro. vast majority of a chapter's members are simply battle brothers. Uh -oh. These are the main force itself, and rather than separating them by further ranks, marines prefer to fight as relative equals for most of their careers. A battle brother is armed and trained with almost every weapon and bit of war gear that the chapter has access to and are organized are. into squads as their superiors feel suits their personality. Although quite a few chapters have traditions about how and when a battle brother can progress through each type of battlefield role. Line infantry, assault troops, heavy weapons, special weapons, tank crews, all of these roles are filled by the rank and file battle brothers of a chapter. Okay. In addition to that, during their time spent as a battle brother, an Astartes warrior might be marked for more specialized duties. Mm, and it's in this like way that new apothecaries, tech marines, and chaplains are recruited. Other I had a question. For you guys that's actually watching the video, what's which like position would you guys like to like if you guys are like, you know, in a like because obviously in the Warhammer, you know, universe, I'll be like at the highest position, obviously. Obviously, you know, you can't be there because I'm there. But what position would you guys like to like play as? Would you guys like to play as like, you know, somebody that's just starting out like a human that's literally like on one of these worlds or whatever that's trying out, you know, for the Space Marines? Like you're like, bro, 14, 15 years old. Some of your friends are dying, you know, and, and stuff. like. Would, would you like to start like down there or would you guys like to, you know, already be established into war and, you know, you're using like the tank or something like that? Because obviously I'm already a Primark. I'm already a Primark, uh, Primark of the uh, of the Salamander. So um you know you can't be what i'd be but you know like what position would you guys be other than that a battle brother that survives centuries of combat duty can perhaps hope to be given a leadership rank or oh, brought snap. into the fold of the veteran companies bro got upgraded to, to general manager rank in our list is given to those brothers who show an aptitude for leadership and strategy the sergeant sergeants are given a squad of their brothers or neophytes to lead and are given some extra training to that effect Typically, these Marines have proven their ability to keep their cool under pressure and put the mission's goals ahead of all other concerns. Makes sense. In the Astra Militarum, a sergeant is there to keep the morale of their troops from buckling, but a Space Marine feels no fear, and so that isn't what keeping their cool means. For an Astartes, getting carried away typically means that they allow their zeal to expose them to more dangerous situations. Power armor is an amazing bit of kit, but if you run into a full gun line because some Chaos Marine said the Emperor was a Dang. nerd, it won't help you much. You might get lit up, Sergeants lit up like keep the their brother's July. rage focused where it should be on the mission. Most squad leaders in the Space Marines are marked out by a different colored helmet. Typically, this will be red, but some chapters, often the ones with red colored armor, choose a different hue, like mm -hmm. the Blood Angels using yellow helmets and iconography to mark out their sergeants. And as sergeant is the rank of squad leaders in general, you can also find veteran sergeants leading squads of a chapter's veteran unit. I like how like um because before like I knew that like um that like um cause especially like in Warhammer, uh 40k how I think there was one guy I forgot the sergeant's name, but there was a character in uh in Warhammer's uh Space Marine two that had like the red helmet or whatever, uh, I forgot his name. But I knew that like it stood for like something else. I, I knew it wasn't just like the ordinary like oh he just wanted his helmet red or whatever. I knew it was like it was because like he was like a le not a level above but like he was basically like the like the captain or like the uh, lieutenant uh, sergeant whatever. So I, I do like how like like the different color helmet shows like what rank you are. I like that a lot. It's like stern guard, command squads, and terminators. An older rank from Lieutenant. the Heresy Legion's lieutenant was recently brought back into the organization of the Space Marine chapters by Ultramarine Primarch Rebute Gilliman. Lieutenants are like uh -oh. Gilliman, the G-Man, found leading fully half of their respective companies to lighten the burden of leadership for the company captains. 
These demi companies are typically led by a lieutenant who reports back to their captain, leading to increased flexibility for the force as a whole. It's also not uncommon to find a lieutenant leading a smaller strike force of marines when it would be unnecessary to have a captain do so. Lieutenants are, as a consequence, almost always pulled from the veteran companies and usually have served as veteran sergeants for some time, using the centuries of knowledge to guide their brothers to victory. They are often viewed as the most likely candidates to replace their captains should they fall in battle. As with most other Space Marine ranks, most chapters have their own unique names for lieutenants, even though almost all of them fill the same role. Black Templar Castellans, Space Wolf Battle Leaders, and Iron Hands Naismiths all help their superiors direct overall strategy and okay, so movement, different names for allowing different, their captains uh, factions to focus on the okay. most pivotal parts of a battle. Captain! Wolf Lords, Masters, Marshals, Cons, Captains by any name in any Cap. chapter do one thing, lead. Of course. Space Marine Captains are the second highest rank in a chapter's organization. Each chapter is organized into companies, or again, whatever the chapter in question calls their formal battle. Wait, so what's, um, so, so for the Ultramarines, right? When, um, so for, wait, for the Ultramarines, wouldn't, um, I believe Titus, wouldn't Titus be captain, right? He would be Titus. No, he would be, he would be captain. He'll be captain. Because I'm pretty sure Titus, I, I think Titus was like lieutenant before. No, not lieutenant. Titus was something before. I'm, I'm guessing he was lieutenant. Uh, and then I think he got upgraded, actually. I think uh, Lord Calgary. I call him Lord Cal I think it's like Lord Calgary, but Lord Calgary is the name that I give him. Lord Calgary, I think, gave him like the uh, gave him like the go-ahead. I think he like he ranked him up. Uh, he gave him like some extra uh, XP and stuff like that. And I believe that um, Titus is like, he's a captain now. And I think uh, Lord Calgary. So I'm guessing the one above captain is Lord, I think. So groups. Each company is typically filled with like it's Maryland Manson. warriors in their various vehicles, servants, technicians, and war gear. A small army in their own right, and so each of them requires a captain to lead them. Not able to be everywhere at once, a captain makes use of their lieutenants and other advisors to direct the flow of battles and entire campaigns, only taking to the field themselves when their direct supervision and might is required. This sort of appearance usually coincides with the captain's command squad, hand-picked veteran warriors from their company that guard their leaders while they make decisions, assist with assaults, and hold the company banner to inspire the other battle. Oh yeah, brothers. that's Titus, yeah. Being a captain also necessitates See? being part of chapter politics, which, depending on the chapter, can be fraught with its own risks, but generally this only entails discussing with the other captains and the chapter's various masters about various campaigns, strategies, and large decisions the chapter needs to make as a whole. Just like how lieutenants act as advisors and successors for their captains, so too do captains advise their chapter masters, and when a master is killed, one captain from amongst their number will be chosen to become the next overall leader of the chapter. Now we're getting into the specialist ranks, and as per usual, they are only ranks in the loosest of terms. These specialists are technically outside of the normal hierarchies of their- Wait, wait, I got a question. So what position is Lord Calgary? What, what, like, is he like a captain as well, or like, like, like what position is he? I'm trying to see real quick. What, which one is he? Hmm. Captors answering only to lieutenants and above, though these leaders quite often yield to the more focused experience of their specialist when they need to ask them anything. The first of these are the warrior healers of a chapter's apothecarian, known usually as apothecaries. Okay. Apothecaries handle all of a chapter's medical needs, from the creation of new space marines to oh, emergency snap. surgeries on the battlefield. Dang. Okay, so result, they're like, they're like a doctors. Space marine apothecary doesn't just need to be handy with a scalpel, they also need to know their way around a bolter. One of the most important duties of these medics is the stewardship of a chapter's gene seed, the progenoid glands that allow for the creation of new marines. When an Astartes falls in... They're, they they kind of remind me of like a uh, of like a multi, what is it like, like it's like a like a multi tool kit like like a multi tool thing, that's that's kind of like their position a little bit and maybe you know what I'm gonna be honest with, I'm gonna take that back that's kind of like the Space Marines in general like they're pretty much good at everything they're not they're not really like a master at one thing they're pretty much just good at everything I like to call them like the 
like the like the um like the Warhammer version of like a, a multi tool. In combat, it's the job of an apothecary to offer what piece they can and then harvest the glands stored in the neck and abdomen, sealing them in armored tubes so they can later be grafted into a neophyte. Oh wow. Space Marines go to war using Tech a Marine. wide variety of gear, weapons, and vehicles, and as such, they are in need of a group of specialists who can maintain their tech, which is often ancient and irreplaceable. Okay. However, the Astartes would never accept outsiders. No into girls chapters, allowed. And so long ago, a <laughs> pact was made with the tech priests of Mars. Any battle brothers with an affinity for technology would be sent to train on the Red Planet and return to their chapters as tech marines so they could maintain a chapter's mechanical So they basically went to like an entire planet just to get like a college degree in technology. Okay, I think that's pretty fire. Right. Like apothecaries, tech marines operate fire. outside the normal hierarchies of a chapter, with the notable exception of the Iron Hands, whose captains and other leaders are often drawn from the tech marines of their armory. Bad, like every other Astartes, tech marines are entirely capable of defending themselves in combat, and often have additional mechanical limbs thanks to the servo harness that many of them are equipped oh, uh, with. They're actually cracked Welding, too. Cutting and repair tools make pretty decent weapons, as it turns out. Another specialist Chaplain. rank in the Astartes chapter organization scheme, chaplains look after the spiritual well-being of their battle brothers. And here's where things get a little weird, because Marines don't have the same relationship to the Imperial religion as the rest of humanity does, except for the Black Templars, but even these most zealous of space marines don't exactly treat worship the same way as mortal humans. Can I keep it real, bro? Bro, bro, how did what's the name become chaplain, bro? How did, what's his name? Leandros? Bro, how did that bum, how did that snitch become a chaplain? Yo, we gotta get, bro, we gotta get to the bottom of this, bro. How did that bald bum, that bald Lester looking, Lester from GTA 5 looking dude become chaplain? I need, bro, I need answers, bro. Pronto. Dude. Most Astartes venerate the Emperor as their very literal creator and more figurative father, a connection that no other human could really claim to have, beyond the metaphorical anyway. And so okay. while a Space Marine chaplain acts as a religious leader and a keeper of the chapter's individual traditions and doctrine, they mostly just lead their brothers in prayer and keep the holy days scheduled properly until they are called to fight, that is. In combat, a chaplain's other responsibilities come into play much more noticeably because a chaplain's most important function is to keep the zeal of their brothers high to remind them of their duty as protectors of the Emperor's realms. And so chaplains are often found in the thickest fighting, swinging the winged mace that is their symbol of office, oh. the Crozius Arcanum, and chanting the many canticles of their faith to energize their brothers, while their black armor and skull-faced helms terrify the I like enemies. the skull-faced thing, I do. Lastly, chaplains I'll are that. generally responsible for disciplining their brothers. When a marine breaks a rule or performs poorly, it's often the chaplains who dictate the penance that needs to be undertaken before a marine can be free of their shame. Let me, let me, bro, bro, no shot, Leand, bro, it, bro, it pissed me off so much, bro, when I seen Leandro's face, bro, oh my god, bro, and then the way, like, bro, his voice was so, like, like, intimidating, like, you know, before, because obviously he had, the, he had the mask on, bro, man, he took the mask off, bro, man, his whole, man, it's like all the testosterone went straight with the mask, bro. He said, he said, he said, yeah. he was like, oh, Titus, like, bro, like, bro, what happened? Like, bro, like, what happened? Bro, like, the, the, the testosterone went with the mask? Like, bro, what, like, your manhood went with the mask? What happened? Like, you, you went from this tough guy, this tough from ghost, uh, from, from Call of Duty looking dude, bro, to, to this weak, pathetic Lester from GTA looking dude. What happened? And you're bald. And you still got that same scar on your face. If a neophyte shows any psychic potential at all, Bum. they are immediately whisked away by members of the last of the specialist ranks in the Adeptus Astartes, the librarians. And while the image of sweater-wearing, bespectacled book nerds the size of a space that sweater looks a little drippy. Funny, I can't lie to you. The chapter librarians have little in common with their modern counterparts. I mean, they're still book nerds, but that's about all. They might enjoy sweaters too. The members of they're a just chapter's bookworms? librarians keep careful records of the chapter's deeds and history, as their name would imply, but they are also the sanctioned psychers of their orders. 
marked by their bright blue armor, psychic hoods, and various psychic weaponry, lending their considerable might to the already terrifying arsenal of the Space Marines. Regular psychers who operate in the Astra Militarum or other Imperial factions are frightening enough with their ability to harness the warp to do anything from defend their allies to smite their foes, but mortal human psychers are always one foot in damnation and must be watched for when, not if, they ever succumb to the powers they wield. Wowzers. Not so with the Space Marine Librarian. Space Marines are legendary for their mental fortitude, but even amongst their brothers, Librarians are strongly willed. All of the physical and mental endurance that comes with being a Space Marine only helps focus the powers of a Psyker, and the results are incredible. Space Marine Psykers are some of the strongest warp users in the galaxy, with some like Cato Tigarius of the Ultramarines being so powerful that they can achieve truly incredible feats like interfacing with the Tyranid hive mind. Every one hey, of the specialist ranks acts as an advisor to their brothers in more conventional positions of power, but the librarians are perhaps valued more than all others. While not explicitly a separate rank, that Hey, hey, this is what I listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I was really out in the field like that, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would legit be a veteran. Veterans in every chapter are marked out from their peers in some way, and from their ranks alone come the candidates for lieutenants, captains, and masters of the various chapter organizations. Veterans are typically marked by white helmets, stripes, or other iconography, which applies to denoting veteran members of other ranks. For instance, veteran sergeants are often denoted by a red helmet with a white stripe, and again, different chapters denote veteran status in different ways. Generally, all veterans in a chapter are pulled into its first company or equivalent. This means that squads of the hardened first company are often seconded to other companies or strike forces instead of fighting as one group like the battle companies do. Veteran marines tend to form units like the Stern Guard, Vanguard Veterans, Command Squads, and Terminator Squads. Some veteran marines are assigned to the more venerable war machines of the chapter, and so it's not impossible to find veteran tank crews amongst a chapter's roster. Special positions such as the chapter ancient, who has the honor of carrying the- Is that the, is that the style? Wait, was that the style manners? Wait, 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 I gotta get, I gotta get a, uh, a good look at him. Wait, hold up. Wait, not this boring. What, bro, what type of boring stuff is this? Possible to find veteran tank crews wait. amongst a chapter's roster. Special position- is that the Salamanders? Yo, I wanted to take a screenshot, yo. 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 Yo, I'm your biggest fan. Yo, yo, I'm your biggest fan, bro. Wow. Yo, yo, oh, sorry. Yo, yo, I'm your biggest fan, yo. I just, I, I, I'm just being completely honest with you. I'm y'all biggest fan. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I would love a hug. Yeah, of course, of course. Don't crush me, though. You're like, you know. You're like 14, 6, 600 pounds. Don't crush me, okay? Like, but, but hey, I, I love you, by the way. Such as the chapter ancient, who Look has my the honor sweet, of carrying glorious the chapter's into war, or the judiciar, who is the chapter's executioner, are also pulled from the ranks of the veterans. They are the <sighs> most experienced, best equipped, and most trusted members of their orders. <sighs> Masters are the highest ranks in any chapter. You guys know that if I was actually in a uh, Warhammer uh, 40k universe, I would actually be a master. You guys know that, right? Though, once again, different chapters will sometimes have different names for these positions. They are always held by the most experienced and often the most senior of their organizations. For instance, the Master of Sanctity is the head AKA of the chapter's reclusive, old head. where their chaplains are trained and operate. Master of the Apothecarian is the Head Medic, Master of the Forge is the Chief Tech Marine, and so on. There are also some Masters that hold positions like Master of the Fleet or Master of the Signal, typically held by Captains who also command a Chapter Company in addition to their other duties to the Fleet or Chapter Communications. Finally, of course, there is the Chapter Masters themselves, the captain chosen to lead the entire chapter as a whole and who guides their efforts across the galaxy. Typically held by warriors with centuries of experience as not just battle brothers but also as leaders, the ranks of chapter masters include easily the most heroic and legendary warriors in the Imperium. Thanks, bro. Um, I, wow, 
these are actually just nice words coming from this guy right here, man. Shout out to him, man. These are just wow, bro. I, like I, I really feel honored, bro. I really feel like I just got my flowers, you know. Because usually, you know, most of us legendary, most of us men, you know, we don't really get our flowers until we're dead. So, wow, man. I, 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 I love that I'm getting my flowers right now, man. Thanks, bro. Marnius Calgar of the Ultramarines, Pedro Cantor of the Crimson Fists, and Gabriel Angelos of the Blood Ravens are names that reverberate. They all got the, the same interior. hairstyle. <laughs> While not a fish. You guys know. I told you guys this at the beginning of the video. You guys know that uh, I'm a, I'm a Primarch, right? I'm actually the Primarch. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm actually the second Primarch, um, you know, of the Salamanders. And, man, I love my squad, man. Um, obviously, you know, <laughs> legit, I'm number one. So, to be a rank in the Adeptus Astartes Force, the Primarchs were the overall leaders of each of the 20 legions of Space Marines before the Horus Heresy. That was before the concept of a chapter was widespread, and so it's fair to say that Primarchs were the chapter masters of each legion. And while the Thunder Warrior legions that Thanks, came before Brew. the Astartes did have a Primarch rank held by their Supreme Commanders, no equivalent rank has ever been held by a standard Astartes warrior, either during the Great Crusade, nor in the 10,000 years that came after. For the Space Marines, the Primarchs were their gene fathers, the templates from which each legion's genetic code was taken. They operated according to the way their Primarchs ordered, and did their bidding in a way that made the Primarchs more like warlords than a formalized rank. So while we thought it was important to include them here for any folks newer to the setting, it's important to note that Primarch is not an official rank. So that was the whole list of ranks in space Wowzers. organizations. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this video? Obviously, you guys know, man, bro. I, I really like this video, man. I really got my flowers, you know, for all the hard work that I've really been uh, putting in, you know, with, with, with my faction and stuff like that. I really appreciate it, man. But comment down below, man. What do you guys rank? Don't lie, by the way, because if you do lie, I will tell on you, okay? And you'll get rescue rooted. Um, other than that, man, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will see you as I face out. And peace out, everybody.